Well, it is that time of year again. It is time to um, figure out what I will be reading for the month of August. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've already filmed the wrap up for July and put those books away and realized, ah, you know, I probably should have kept them out for this little front portion of this TBR. So <laughs> just pretend I'm holding the books. Um, out of the books, there were six. One I DNF'd, and that was Jaws um, by Peter Benchley, I want to say. I got halfway through, and I was just, honestly, was just bored. Um, I prefer the movie. <laughs> That's plain and simple. Um, okay. But out of the rest of the books, I completed all of them. So there is no punishment roll or anything like that. Um, so I had a total of six books. Again, I completed completely read five of them. I am counting the other one I DNF because, you know, I started it and realized it just wasn't for me. So no punishment roll. So let's go ahead and start the rolls. Okay. Roll number one. Eight. Um, I'm going to start over because I don't remember where I left off and I do know that I messed up on directions. Like I started going, um, like to my right when I should have been going to my left or something like that. So I'm just going to start over, um, and go from there. Okay. So eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the sun. Okay, so roll number one, I rolled a six and a two, so an eight. And I landed on a square with the sun, which is to read the longest book on my TBR. <sighs> this book is 1,358 pages. That includes the, what do they call it? Um, epilogue. I knew it wasn't excerpt. <laughs> epilogue. So that includes epilogues. I will be looking for an audiobook for this. Um, I may try to do 100 pages a day. I don't know how I'm going to do this one. I'm also a little intimidated by this. But the longest book I own, and I've looked at some other books, but they're like the second longest book that I own is 1,200 pages, and then it's around the 800 page mark or less. So, so I mean, it'll be good to see, but and get it out of the way. But anyway, Leo Tolstoy, or yeah, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Um, I just know it's about war, and it's about peace, hence War and Peace. Um, and it's a classic and it's a chunker and I know, I don't know. I really don't know much going into this. I tried to read it one time and ended up DNFing it. And that was long before I found out how much it helps me with these books to listen to the audiobook while reading along. So this will be kind of like a second chance. Um, and hopefully I will enjoy it much, much more than my first go around and I really don't remember more. I remember uh, being in a home at one point and there's discussion on war or upcoming war. And I think if I remember it, it takes place in Russia or Prussia or somewhere over in that area. Um, but that was years ago that I tried to <laughs> read, th read this and I don't even know how far I got into it, but I do love reading classics. Um, so I'm going to give this one another shot. It is the longest one on my TBR. So hopefully I can get it completed in the month of August. Hopefully. Roll number two. Oh no, it's a double. So we're adding a roll. Okay. Oh, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The water drop. And roll number two, I ended up with two fives, so a double, which means an extra roll. So 
we're up to six rolls. <laughs> so still manageable, still doable. Anyway, okay, so I ended up on the water drop space for this one, which is the most intimidating book on my TBR or a book that I find intimidating for whatever reason. Um, for this one, I'm going with a book that I read in high school. I remember at least saying that I liked it. I don't remember anything about this book. Um, it's another classic, but um, I am intimidated because, again, I do remember saying that I liked it, but did I really? I don't know because I don't remember anything about this. Now, this was like in two. 2001 that I read this maybe the start of 2002 2000 to the start of 2002 one of my high school classes um, <laughs> yeah I don't know if I really liked it or if I said that I liked it because I thought that's what was expected of me so I am intimidated by it to see if I'd really do like it so this will be a reread for me um, but A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. So I do remember saying that I liked it. Um, it's a girl, young girl's coming of age at the turn of the century. Um, I remember, I think alcoholism is big in this. It takes place in New York, the slums of Brooklyn from 1902 until 1919. I don't... family relationships, childhood. I don't, I don't really remember. <laughs> I do remember. I think if I remember right, we're following the perspective of the child, but it is very much not a young adult or, well, it might be a young adult. I don't know. It's been so long since I've looked at it, but I just, I don't remember. And I'm scared. I know I said I liked it. I think I liked it, but I don't remember. So I'm intimidated because <laughs> I hope I like it, but we'll see. Okay, roll number three. Six. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six. The treats. Okay, so roll number three is um, I got a one and a five, so a six. And for this one, and for this one, I landed on this square that has the brown little, my interpretation of a tr cat treat. So for this one, it is kind of like a my choice or a mood read. So I thought, what am I in the mood for? I could have waited and decided what I was in the mood for, but I thought it's better for me to decide what I want to read now, but it's still going to be whatever I want. So I'm going with more of like a my choice i am in the mood to read this one and so i am sticking it in this slot but that is volume three of um, phoebe and her unicorn so phoebe is between the ages of five and seven i can't remember exactly how old she is i i want to say she's like seven i could be wrong anyway so this one's volume three which is unicorn versus goblins so Phoebe meets the unicorn and she makes a wish, meaning Phoebe, that her and the uni uh, unicorn can become BFFs or best friends forever. And so you're just following them on their adventures and this is a um, comic book. So um, I really do like the art. I think it's whimsical. I, I think it is very cute. Um, and I'm excited to continue this series and read this third one. Roll number four. Oh, crap. Another double. Two, two fours. Oh, crap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Laser dots. Okay, so roll number four is a double. Not happy. So that means seven reads. Um, this one I'm a little bit more forgiving of because I landed on the laser dots, which is shortest read on my TBR. So the shortest read that I found on my TBR is 52, 
53, 52 and a half basically pages. And that is, and I know I'm not going to say it right, O Freb, Freb Joyous, Freb, Freb Jewous Day. Anyway, by Lewis Carroll. Just really short. Um, I think these are like a lot of lyrics. I mean, here's one that says the dear gazelle and it does have like the staff symbols there, but so poetry or music lyrics, but I mean, 52 and a half pages. That's, I can fly through this. And so I am a little bit more forgiving of the double because it's such a short read. And I have no idea what that's really about. I mean, obviously there's, I mean, once I read it, I'll be able to know if there's an underlying theme but not until I read that, because I don't know. And there's no synopsis on that book. And what should have been the last roll, but is not. <laughs> She's so freaking serious. <laughs> okay, another double four. All right, another eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ribbons. Holy cow. Another double. Hmm. So we're up to eight books. Okay, fine. Fine. I can do that. I can read that many books. I've read more than that in a month, so I know I can still do this. As long as I don't get more long, longest books on my TBR. Oh, sorry. I hit the tripod. So for this unfortunate double of a roll, I landed on um, ribbons, right? No. Yes. <laughs> so for this unfortunate role that resulted in doubles, I landed on ribbons. Most anticipated book or something I'm just really looking forward to. So I'm going with a nonfiction and I have three and I don't really think they're a series, but they're the same type of books. And this particular one is Women in Science by Rachel Ignatowski. Uh, Sorry, I know I said that wrong. Uh, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. And it's written and illustrated by Rachel. So this is just, I mean, it is just what it says. And I love the cover. And I have two other books like this one. What are the other ones? Like 50 Women in Art. And then the other one I think is Sports. So, I mean, here's one. I mean, just look. And then it's a page of just stuff about this character. This one is Maria Sibylia Mar Moran. So I'll read about her. Um, and each person is like liter literally one. You have the page of the character and then a page of text. And then this one's Mary Agnes Chase. Um, who else do we have in here? Rachel Carson. Um, there's just there's a lot so I don't know I am just really I've been trying to find a time to where I could pick these up and so now I'm, I'm excited that I can put this on so again just like it says it's 50 fearless pioneers so it's women that made an impact in science and what they did in the science field impacted the world and kind of changed to how we know things today so I think this will be interesting Okay, roll number six, the first of the doubles. Okay, oh, harmony. Oh, I think this is also called Snake Eyes. Oh, double one. Two, one, two, another laser dot. I like the laser dots. Oh, and another double. I swear, we're up to nine books. I can still do this depending on the length of the books, I can still do this. So for this one, I landed on another laser dot square. Another short book. That's good. So I'm going with The Call of the Wild by Jack London. I have never read this before, and I know there's a lot of people that love this book. I don't know. It's 62 pages, so there's just 10 more pages than the one by Lewis Carroll, the old Fred Joyous Day or whatever it is. Um, 
yeah, I can read this in a day. Um, I mean, the writing is fairly small, <laughs> so it's, yeah, but I hope it's not sad. I've heard it is. I don't want to read that. <laughs> something sad, but it is what it is. So this is the next shortest book on my TBR, um, Call of the Wild by Jack London. And honestly, I don't know anything about this one. Um, it says Jack London's novels and ruggedly individual life seem to embody American hopes, frustrations, and romantic longings in the turbulent first years of the 20th century. Um, years infused with wonder and excitement. Anyway, this is considered London's greatest novel, gripping tale of a heroic dog that thrusts into a brutal life of the Alaska gold rush, ultimately faces a choice between living in a man's world and returning to nature. So I guess we're following the dog's perspective. That's what it sounds like. That'll be interesting, but I don't want this to be sad. And I've heard it is, but I don't hear much about this, but I do know that people love this. Please, no more doubles. Please. Okay, good. A three and a two. Not a double. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five. Paw print. Okay, draw number one for the paw print is Baba Yaga. Sweet, I can do this. Okay, so roll number seven, we landed on a paw print, which was to draw a card. And as it was, I think it was blurry. <laughs> But it said Baba Yaga. At first when I read that, I was thinking, Baby Yoga? What the heck is that? No, it's Baba Yaga. <laughs> so the one book that I have on my TBR pile is a graphic novel. Um, and it's right in the title, Baba Yaga's Assistant. This is by Marika Makula. Probably said that wrong, but just, I mean, and the just looks the same. <laughs> um, assistant wanted ASAP must have skills in hauling, obeying orders, cooking, and cleaning magical talent. A bonus must be good with heights. Enter Baba Yaga's house to apply. So Baba Yaga needs an assistant and obviously someone applies for the job. So, I mean, house with chicken legs running. I did read a book like that. Baba Yaga looks a little, I don't know, just intimidating and a little scary. <laughs> Not someone I would want to come across. Um, but yeah, I think this will be good. Again, you know, this will be e pretty easy to get through. It is a graphic novel and the things are fairly big panels. So I'm not so upset about all those doubles anymore. Okay, please be good to me. Please be good. Okay, six and four, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Another paw print, and yes, I'm going in the right direction. Okay, draw number two is a troll. Okay, roll number eight landed on another paw print, um, and the card was Troll. So I could have taken this a couple of different ways. When I first wrote the card, I was thinking Troll like the, like a magical creature, a troll, or a mythical being. Um, I could be more practical and be like, do I have a um, book with a person who trolls someone? in person or online or something like that. Um, but I did find one where the person is an actual troll and that is um, Unnatural Magic by C.M. Wagoner. Um, I don't, I got this one just because of the cover. I absolutely love this cover. I don't remember what this is about. So I'm gonna read the back. It says, Let's see, Ona can write the parameters of a spell faster than any of the young men in her village school. But despite her incredible abilities, she's denied a place at the nation's premier arcane academy. Undaunted, she sails to the bustling city-state of Hexus, hoping to find a place at a university where they don't think 
there's anything untoward about providing a woman with a magical education. But as soon as Ona arrives, she's drawn into the mysterious murders of four trolls. And then the second paragraph starts out with um, Tessira, I'm guessing. Um, anyway, this individual is a troll who never quite fit into her clan despite being the leader's daughter. So there's trolls in this book. So this counts. And I'm excited to finally get to this one. It's been long enough that I don't, you know, I, I remember picking it up because of the cover and then reading the synopsis and thinking it sounded good. Um, and then, of course, it's been long enough that I forgot about what the synopsis said. When was this even published? So it's really not that old. It's, I mean, 2019. So I must have gotten it. Or I must have purchased it. November of 2019. I mean, I mean, we know what crap 2020 was like. So no wonder I forgot. I definitely blocked some stuff, evidently. And this happened to be one of them. <laughs> so anyway, yes. Okay, fingers crossed, the last roll. Yes. Okay. Three. I can do that. Okay. Last move. One, two, three. A water drop. And thankfully, the final drop, final drop, final roll. It's still a drop of the dice. The final roll. Roll number nine. I landed on the water drop. <laughs> There's where I got the drop. Um, so an intimidating book. So not intimidated by the size. I think the book looks interesting. I remember when I got this, I was browsing Amazon for various graphic novels or mangas. Um, and for whatever reason, this one came up, but it is not a graphic novel and it is not a manga. This is an actual novel. Um, there is no synopsis on the back. Here's the spine. Here's the front. Mad Alchemist by Net Novel. Um, and this is volume one, and I know there's a lot. I think I saw 10? I don't know. So I'm a little nervous because when I bought this, all I did was go off of the cover thinking, oh, that looks creepy and like that will be a good read. I did not see this net novel and I did not read any descriptions because it's like, oh, it just looks good. Let's go ahead and, and get it. So, and it was like two bucks. So <laughs> maybe five, but anyway, it was very cheap. Um, and I don't know anything about this and I've never heard anyone talk about this. So I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> But Mad Alchemist, so I'm guessing it's about a Mad Alchemist? I don't know. So that was the nine rolls, and here are the nine books. This is heavy because of this chunker of a book. Um, yeah. <laughs> definitely a doable stack. Despite the War and Peace book, definite doable. Um, especially where some of these are the shortest books and graphic novels and... Yeah. So I am looking forward to this. This is an exciting stack. I, even though I'm intimidated by A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, I'm even more intimidated by War and Peace. So with War and Peace next to A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited about A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. We'll see how it goes. Those are the nine books that I will be reading for the month of August. Um, obviously, I do want to participate in two readathons, but I'm not going to build a TBR for those. Those I'm going to just see if maybe any of these will fit those prompts. Um, and if I can squeeze in any additional books, then I'll find an additional book for that particular prompt. I want to participate in Tropical Readathon and um, Pixarathon. Pixarathon is hosted by Literary Lily, who is here on YouTube. So I'll um, try and put her channel information in the description box, but, um, yeah. And there's also a bunch of book clubs. So that I want to participate in. So I don't know how well I'm actually going to do this month, 
but I am excited. I think there's going to be some great books to read this month. So let me know what you are planning to read in the month of August. What are you most excited for? Um, are there any readathons that you will be participating in? Let me know in the comments below. In the description box, you will find links to my other social media platforms um, and any other information like that. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I will talk to you later.